What's up gamers? Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best shiny hunting locations that you can get fairy type Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, just to let everyone know, these shiny hunting locations are going to require you to have a boosted encounter rate as well as giving you the sparkling powers. We are going to be using sandwiches that help us enhance it. Now, for the sandwich that I'm using, we are pretty much going to just slap on a tomato and two salty Herba Mysticas. There are also other recipes out there, but I'm going to be using this simple one because it's just a tomato and two salties. If I slap that sandwich on, that's going to give me sparkling power boost three, an encounter rates boost number three, and it's going to give me a title power, which is basically having a title on my Pokemon when I catch them. Let's get started. So one of my favorite spots to go hunting for Mauro and Azumarill is at the Casa Roya Lake, but for a lot of people, this is a very big lag zone. So what I like to do is not really go into the water, but stay right over here in this spot, which is right here. And I like to start at the edge in the corner here. So you're going to see we're getting a family of a Maro and a Zumaro, and I like to run across the water because you get the water spawns, you'll get the land spawns, and if you don't want to just travel the whole landscape, you can just despawn them all out like that, and then you get a whole new family and then respawn them back in pretty much by walking over to this spot. So we should possibly, there it is. There's another family, you get them in over here, but if you don't want to just stick to one spot and you want to move around, this is basically what you have to do is zoom out and slowly, not like really fast, just walk across the water border. That way you're able to spot if you're going to see any Azumarill or Marrow. Remember, the Marrows are going to be green and the Azumarills are going to be yellow. And uh, sometimes you need to slow down for them to spawn. It's going to happen where you need to do that. So just pay attention to that as well. Look down below, but kind of shift your right stick left and right as you're moving. They're going to be spawning in the water below you too, in case you do have to jump over to that. These are the hills here and you can look to left and right. You get more families. So I really like the spot. It's not laggy, but if you're willing to deal with the lag, of course, you can just not follow this trail and go back and forth. Once I hit this rock, by the way, I'm done. This is where we end. But if you want to be the brave person and, and endure lag, you could just jump in and you will get family spawning all over the place pretty much here go a little slow you'll have family spawn and you might get lucky and get a shiny because since you boosted the fairy rates you're not gonna be dealing with the water dragon tatsugiri so having this on is pretty good all your dragon spawns are definitely a lot lower here everywhere you go you're pretty much gonna find a zoom or a marrow. so let me know exactly which spots you found the best when it comes oh i just despawned a green one oh well, that's why you go slow, guys. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like and please comment and subscribe because it tells me that you guys want more videos like this. And I really do appreciate all the support on the last two videos as well. Thank you. So if you enter the Tag Tree Forest, this is pretty much where we're going to be hunting Impidimp, Morgrim, and Mimikyu. Now, the first part of this area is going to be all Impidimps up to here. And when you do cross this bridge is where we're going to find Mimikyu. So specifically, if you're just looking for an Impidimp, which... You can notice by the blue color, this will be the spot to do it. So you can just kind of run over this pathway. You see all the main impidips on the way. Make sure to pay attention and look around. It gets a little bit harder to hunt in this area at night. Also, this forest is like one FPS, <laughs> which, which makes it a little bit difficult. But you basically run the pathway of the tag tree thicket right until the bridge part. This is what I like to do. And just like walk around anywhere you want. And that's going to be covering, like I said, the whole area. But as you approach the bridge, when you cross there, you're going to enter into a dual hunt and this is when the fun begins when you really want to hunt Mimikyu and in my opinion Mimikyu is not that easy to spot even though it's shiny is going to be a completely desaturated color Mimikyu is going to be tough because you're also going to be now having Impidimp its evolution as well and these Mimikyus so the ideal pathway to hunt these Pokemon here is going this way so we want to start by this lake look at that hill and then form a left around it and we're going to go in complete circles this is probably the best and most efficient way to hunt these Pokemon. You could also jump on that hill to see what's going on. Run around the border. You want to get the maximum amount of spawns possible. Usually around here, you'll get a family of Impidimp and Morgrim. There it is. And there is your Mimikyu's walking around. And sometimes you're going to have to take a double look at Mimikyu. It does get a little bit confusing. After you come around that area, you then want to just wrap around because you want to hit as many families as possible when you are boosted. And then come around here. You should see a wild Terra Pokemon, a 
couple more spawns here then take a turn wrap around make sure to check all the borders and then you should see an opening here and pretty much that's when you're back on the path again and you'll see the rotation we just did as we are approaching that exact spot and then just at this tree you're gonna make a right and your pathway is pretty much just going to loop but again this is probably the most efficient if you're hunting all these fairy type Pokemon here. It's going to be a hard hunt. So good luck over here. And uh, maybe, maybe you get your shiny. Let me know. Okay, so this is a very nice Curlia spot here. It's going to be by Lavincia really close across the town. So Lavincia South and right over if you hop that little border here on the town, you will be getting a bunch of Curlia spawning here. And the cool thing about being right by the town is you can do this as soon as you hop in the fence. You get the town spawn, causes everything to despawn. You jump back out and you basically get a free respawn of every single one. Now, what I did notice is that they do take some time to respawn. These are a little slow, so you don't want to run, run around too fast. That is the key to getting them. And the cool part is you can make your way down to this beach. Oh, and as you make your way down to this beach, you're going to get a bunch of other spawns of them. They spawn a lot, by the way. So you'll be getting them from top all the way down here. You can even rotate out the top spawns with the bottom spawns by doing this. A really cool idea. And the cool part is if you do happen to approach the water area, this can almost become a dual hunt because you'll start to get Meryl spawning as well. So if you kind of want to do two in one shot, run to the water area, you'll get the Meryls to start spawning and then walk back and you can also hunt the Curlias. That's the cool part about this location. So yeah, if you want to double hunt, this is a good spot by going to the water. And if you want to focus just on Curlia, stay towards the grass side, go up and down until you spawn in all the ones you need. So that's pretty much it for the Curlias. Okay, so if you go, towards this area at north province area three and climb up this spot you can actually hunt ralts and gardevoir this is a cool thing so if we go up here we'll start to see families look at that a family of gardevoir and ralts another family of gardevoir and ralts keep going up this mountain you'll get more of them they should be spawning in as we keep climbing there's another family here there's another family so basically climbing up this mountain is going to give you an opportunity to get gardevoir and ralts if you maybe just don't want to get curly up maybe you want to get the full evolution or maybe you want to get the little ralts in order to do the decks and get all of them shiny it's up to you how you want a shiny hunt again i'm just presenting you with these options and once you despawn you can just go right back down the mountain and maybe you get lucky with a shiny spawn showing up as you're just exploring okay so there are pretty much two places to hunt for tinkatuff one is going to be using the town despawn respawn method and this is going to be located at the north end of zappa pico right over here and what you do is you basically have to get the town name to show up and when you get out of the town you step here it says that at that moment you're going to get a bunch of tinkatuffs in the background and they're going to start spawning and what you want to look for is a bronze looking hammer that's what you want to identify on this entire group and when you back up it's gonna say the town they're all gonna despawn you walk back out and then you will see that there they are all of them spawning again sometimes it takes a little bit for them to load up if you do get tired of just sitting at the town and doing that you always have the option of being able to run straight forward and that should also spawn in a whole nother group of tinker tufts as we are going forward so you don't have to stay still that is probably the easiest way to do it without really minimal effort there also is another great spot to do this hunt so if you teleport over to north province area one on the map this is in this location right over here you're going to be able to kind of do a dual hunt here with jigglypuff wigglytuff and you're going to be able to also hunt tinker tuff here and this is pretty nice because all you got to do is just roll around here and it's almost a really nice and relaxing dual hunt. So you just walk around and you're hunting two fairies at one time. By doing this, you'll get little families of Jigglypuff. Make sure you're paying attention to the Jigglypuff eyes because that's going to be your big indicator of if it's going to be a shiny Pokemon. Also, the Wigglytuffs. And what you can do is you can just keep walking around here, spawn in families of the Jigglies, and this would be a great move to do. What I like to do typically to make my life easier is kind of walk my way up all the way to the top here, get maximum amount of families, get a bunch of Tinkas. And the cool thing is you also can get a little bit of a despawn thing by entering a new spot. So Glaciato Mountains, and then you you could despawn out the ones in front of you come back and just repeat your hunt again just look for the hammers and make your way all the way back down to that pokemon stop or center you guys get the pretty much the idea of how to do this but yeah it's a nice dual hunt so you can use this one as well if you go to medali on the east exit of it this is basically again another trick for a town spawn this is a great spot to hunt Fido and its evolution, Bash Bun. 
If you step out of the area right here, you'll see the key that says Dali Zappa Passage. And you can see all of a sudden all these Fido spawning. And you also have access to Dadini here as well. So you have multiple Pokemon spawning at once. If you go back, gone, go back out spawn absolutely new spawns pop up again you can see them on the left and right and what you really want to do is identify the shiny pokemon and we got one there it is just like that in the video that was pretty quick how cool is that so that's pretty much what the shiny looks like over here that was the fastest hunt ever and since you get an easy triple shiny hunt in one spot by just respawning and despawning dadini should be easy to see based on the color of the mouse it's a lot more darker and dash is basically not going to be having yellow on it so that's not going to be too bad if you go to the side facing a little more north so we were at the east side when we hunted the dadinis and those and if you go to this side right over here where i'm facing you're going to be able to get Jigglypuffs over here. So we step out in West Province Area 3, and you can see a bunch of Jigglypuffs spawn. You can see our lovely Fidos and Dash Bun spawning, and you can just go back. You know, make sure to take a peek. Make sure you're looking left and right. You don't want to miss an opportunity to get a shiny. Now, if you want to hunt Sylveons, the only really spot to really get them is going to be in Alphernada. This is where your fairy Pokemon are just surrounding the area for some reason. And when you go to Alphernada, you're going to see some Sylveon spawns here, but there's not going to be a lot. It's not like the Flareon one we talked about in our fire video. These Sylveons rarely spawn. And they only are like one or two of them. So shiny hunting these are not going to be easy. And by the way, in this old footage, I was able to get a shiny. So shiny Sylveon is a nice blue color and should be really obvious to spot if you do see it. So a trick I did in a previous video was resetting the date by being in the location in order to get the Sylveons. But a newer method has come out that if you do eat the sandwich and then start to do the date skipping, you will eventually get a Sylveon spawn to show up on your map. Just like this footage over here. Once that Sylveon mass outbreak has appeared on your map, you're then pretty much free to hunt it down in a lot more faster method. And if you're someone who doesn't like date skipping, don't worry, you do not have to do this. You, you can just eat your sandwich at around 11.59. And when the clock strikes 12 and the dates do change and the mass outbreaks are all different, then you can focus on the new mass outbreaks on the screen. So now you know how to do that. And that's pretty much the simple way of hunting Sylveon. But if you wanna be hardcore and do it without even mass outbreaks, yeah, you just have to walk around this area pretty much despawn some sylveons in and out until you see a complete despawn just like that and then once you get your despawns you're just gonna walk back and yeah there you go there's another there's a new sylveon there's two new sylveon spawns and you can back up again do the same thing over head back to the same location and you'll get your wait is that a shiny yep that's a, okay not what we were going for that, that's how you do it guys we got both dogs in one video Okay, so in Alphernada, you're going to also get a bunch of Clef Key spawns. And what you're going to be looking for is the Golden Clef Key. And the fastest way I would say to despawn them and respawn them is just by tapping the town. That should show up. That'll despawn the Pokemon. And when you walk back out, you should be able to get different spawns. And sometimes it, if they don't show up, you just walk out a little bit and take a bit of time. There they are. Everything's starting to spawn in. That is the best way to do the faster respawns of these Pokemon. If you go too fast, I notice these Clef Keys do not spawn as fast, but you want to be very careful so you can see a bunch of them over here if you want to get a whole bunch of them make sure you eat in the sandwich and also do the date skip that would be able to give you a cleft key outbreak on the map which is what we got right over there so you can see the massive amounts if we head over to that so i'm gonna walk my way very slowly you can see one sylveon here not really many sylveons head to the cleft key outbreak real quick also pay attention to the gold on the keys because a cleft key is a completely gold keychain don't want to miss that and now we're going to get a whole horde of them because of that. So not only do you have to focus now on it, but if there's not a lot of Pokemon for you to see and observe, and they're very limited amounts and not much, you just do the mass outbreak trick with your sandwich. And you should be getting a few of them spawning in. And you see that? They're all coming in very slowly. And you can start hunting them down and doing the knockouts. Or you can picnic reset until you do happen to get your shiny golden keychain. So if you do pop the fairy sandwich in Pokemon Scarlet, you're going to be able to get two Pokemon to spawn exactly at the same time. But there are better areas and methods in order to get these two Pokemon. But in Scarlet, what you're going to get is Screaming Tail and you're going to be getting Fluttermane. This is a dual hunt if you do want to run this pathway. So from here, by the way, Austin John told me about this while I was streaming this live. From Research Lab number four, what you want to do is hop on your bike and start to just move and this is going to be very similar to pokemon violet and other hunts that require you to be down here and you're just going to simply follow this pathway going up maybe we get a shiny in this maybe we don't but i did happen to get 
footage of getting a screaming tail because that thing is literally everywhere when you pop a fairy sandwich in the game so you're going to continue going up on this path i'm just not going too fast here but i can actually go a little fast because we have the power of editing and what we're going to do is we're then going to make a left at the upcoming joint you're going to see a giant pathway here you're going to make sure to not miss some spawns here because what happened to me on my live stream was i did actually get my first screaming tail and it was as soon as i jumped off of this spot here that it happened to show up and you can see some delayed spawns behind me so you do want to go a little slower after this we're going to jump off into this area land on this platform right down below and you're going to slowly make yourself oh did my sandwich just run out yeah my sandwich just ran out as i just did this but pretty much yeah as these guys are all spawning you're gonna pop your sail you know make sure your sandwich is on and you're gonna continue just going straight all the way up until you hit the lab again and once you're back at the lab you're just gonna repeat the loop over and over again and you should be able to eventually bump into a screaming tail but there's other areas you want to do in but this is the fastest route to get the most spawns to happen when it comes to screaming tail so since i'm in pokemon scarlet i'm going to need someone for pokemon violet since iron valiant is a version exclusive so i connected online with my buddy sauce mcgavin who is an awesome streamer here on youtube and he decided to help me since he is the master at catching iron valiant so basically what sauce did was he went to the research lab number three which we previously talked about for getting screaming tail and flutter main and from there he walked into the cave with his boosted fairy sandwich and the coolest part is this cave will spawn so many iron valiant as you can see on the screen here and basically he's just gonna go down the pathway and check around and look around for iron valence to finally spawn and the shiny one is going to be a nice silver looking one with a pink there's basically no color it's just liquid metal i i don't know how to call it there's just a nice pure silver with a little bit of color in it that way you can identify the shiny so eventually sauce mr sauce mcgavin finally was able to find the shiny for me and they called me over and i made my way down to it and finally i was able to bump into it and this shiny looked amazing so pretty much i didn't do the work for this one this was sauce mcgavin so thank you very much you got it you got it let's go lock it in and if you're a pokemon violet player all you have to do is just go down this cave and look around and do the route if you want to spawn in iron valiant if you enjoyed this video make sure to also check out this one because you might be able to find a lot of interesting pokemon here seriously click it